Now what is exactly a Laplace transform? Before going into Laplace transform, let us quickly see why exactly we are going to use Laplace. So consider we have a system and often to this system we will name the system as A and we will give some input say X to this system A and we will get output Y. Often these systems are made up of electronic circuitry, electrical circuitry and digital circuitry. And these circuitries have components like resistors, capacitors and inductors. We have already seen the RLC network uh, giving us the differential equations in the form of X and Y. So of course X and Y are related with respect to each other uh, in the form of differential equations. So you have dy by dt, then you might have d2y by dt, uh, then you might have dy by dt square, some constants here and there, and then you might find yourself equating it to x of t. So basically y and x are functions of each other and at the same time these are the functions of time. But on, not only this, you have to solve the differential equations at the time. Solving differential equations takes a whole lot of effort and there are many solutions or many practical approaches to solve the differential equations but all these are difficult to solve often for a lane. Laplace transform actually gives you the age to solve differential equations very easily. So what exactly happens is we are dealing in time domain while we are solving in uh, differential equations. So basically you can see time everywhere that is called as time domain computation and Laplace transform is known to be a frequency domain computation. Alright. So Laplace is a frequency domain computational platform. So basically we are converting all the differential equations into a particular frequency domain so that we, we can convert all these terms into certain y of s then certain y1 of s and y2 of s and x of s which are actually related to each other in the form of additions multiplications and division. So after we convert a particular differential equation or a particular input or a system's transfer function or say inputs characteristics y output characteristics into the respective Laplace transform it becomes really easy to find out the relation between y and x. Ultimately we need to find out one of these three when two of them are given. So we might be given the information about input, uh, information about the system. We might have to calculate dy or maybe any permutation among these. So basically while we need to calculate all these things, we need to perform Laplace conversion to is our computation. Now differential equations are difficult to solve as I already said. The Laplace transforms can easily solve for differential equations by using basic operations. What are these basic operations? These are multiplication, division and partial fractions mainly. Alright. Inverse Laplace is used to get the solution in time domain. So when we have computed all the Laplace transform we have done these basic computations and now we get the basic forms say x1 of s then one upon x2 of s or say x3 of s. These are known Laplace forms which can be converted into inverse Laplace transform. So basically you need to remember the typical Laplace transform of general equations or general expression so that you can take Laplace transform as well as take inverse Laplace and you can easily solve the input output characteristics mean that. Let us see how exactly a Laplace transform is calculated. Let us say we have function f of t. So this is any function f of t. This could be input or output or maybe a system expression. And the Laplace transform of f of t is signified or written as capital F of s. Now capital F of s is equal to integration 0 to infinity f of t into e raised to minus s t. Now I have written s in the previous slide many times. This s is nothing but sigma plus j omega. 
alright. So this is actually a combination of frequencies. This is the frequency spectrum. So we are using this S as a frequency, and now this S is going to come up in f of s. So this is the formula f of t into e raised to minus s t dt, and we are going to solve this integration every time when we have to find out the Laplace transform. But this is not the case every time. As you solve along, you can easily calculate the Laplace transform of many expressions just by applying properties, which we will cover later. So this is the basic formula to get the Laplace transform. And let us just take some example when we have f of t as e raised to at. Right? So we just put f of t equal to e raised to at. Then we have e raised to minus s of t, and this is the definite integral while we solve for this expression. e raised to at into e raised to minus s t gives e raised to minus t into in bracket s minus a dt. Now integrating this function, we will get minus 1 upon s minus a. Just remember this is the constant term because we are multiplying and integrating with respect to t. So s and a are nothing but constants. a is anyway a uh, constant for t and s is the constant here. Okay? So basically uh, this will give minus 1 upon s minus a e raised to minus t in the limits infinity to 0. While you put infinity in this function, e raised to minus infinity will give you 0 minus when you put t equal to 0 you will get minus 1 so minus of minus 1 and upon s minus a so you are going to get f of s is equal to 1 upon s minus a so when you see 1 upon s minus a is as a Laplace transform of some equation you must remember that f of t was nothing but e raised to a t right so this is the basic procedure that we can follow to find out Laplace transform and inverse Laplace. So basically when you know f of s and you are just calculating f of t just by looking at the Laplace function, you, you call it inverse Laplace and when you calculate f of s out of f of t, you call it Laplace transform. We are going to see the properties of Laplace transform and how exactly Laplace transforms are useful while calculating differential equations in later later stages but just let us quickly see what are the general laplace transform of typical expressions f of t so for f of t is equal to 1 you have 1 upon s 1 can be written as e raised to 0 right so a is equal to 0 and hence 1 upon s we have already seen e raised to at is equal to 1 upon s minus a e raised to minus at will just put minus a in place of it so s minus minus a will get will, we will get 1 upon s plus a similarly sin a t if you represent sin a t in the form of exponential functions you will get Laplace transform like this and cos a t will give you this s upon a square plus a square then if you have f of t is equal to some power of t the Laplace transform is given as n factorial divided by s raised to n plus 1. For example, if you have t square, so Laplace transform of t raised to 2 will be 2 factorial divided by s raised to 3. Okay? So this will give me 2 upon s u. Similarly, for t raised to 3, we will get 3 factorial upon s raised to 4, which ultimately will give me 6 for s raised to 4. We can get the Laplace transform of 1 in a similar fashion. 1 is nothing but t raised to 0. We have 0 factorial divided by s. 0 factorial is nothing but 1 for s. So these are the basic introductory general Laplace transforms which you must remember. I will meet you again when you call me back. Thank you so much.